workshop. Before we start uh, with Karim and the tour to the swampland, let me just recall one thing which Boris mentioned already on the first day. Uh, you see it on your screen. Next year, 2022, we will host um, Euro Strings 2022 in Lyon. So please uh, save the dates, 25 to 29 of April. That will be one of the <coughs> key events of this uh, network. But of course, it will be an international conference. And we hope uh, by that time we can all travel and come together and talk and discuss and have coffee. And um, we have a big lecture hall which can host 500 people. So please uh, come, everybody, and let's have a nice uh, event next April. So, keeping that in mind, let's uh, go to the first morning speaker, which is Karim Benakli, who will take us on an excursion to the swampland. And maybe you can start sharing your screen again. Very good. Good morning, everybody. Um, you see my screen? You hear me? Yes. Okay. So first, let me thank the organizer for the invitation to speak uh, today. Um, and uh, thank all the people that are uh, joining this morning. I was asked to give some kind of a review on uh, the swampland. And uh, it's not, it was not an easy task because um, I tried to summarize just if I just had to list the conjectures, it would take an hour. You are like more than 400 papers with uh, all kinds of different uh, type of uh, conjectures and uh, change of the conjectures and uh, evidence of the conjecture. So I try to give some main ideas about uh, what is the swampland and uh, some uh, selection of some of the swampland criteria. Hopefully, people that uh, will hear this talk will have an idea what, <coughs> excuse me, what we are doing, and uh, uh, in the in, when they want to read the paper, they will have some guide. Okay. So let's start with the, what is the swampland program? Okay. Uh, so. The swampland program is that uh, if you take all your QFTs that are well behaved, which means they don't have anomalies, you are uh, doing quantum filtering in uh, low energy, and you say, okay, this is in fact a low energy effective filtering of some quantum theory of gravity, which is in the UV. And then the swampland the uh, idea says that uh, not all of these a priori well-behaved theories that are, don't have any pathology as quantum filters can be embedded in a quantum theory of gravity. Those that can be embedded in a quantum theory of gravity are called uh, as part of this landscape, while those which fail to be uh, coming down from a UV theory of quantum gravity are said uh, they lie in the swamp land. So because they are e effective filter, they should have a cutoff. And uh, one thing which is important to keep in mind is that this cutoff should always be smaller than M Planck, and uh, that M Planck doesn't change. We, we are gonna, at some point, change parameters of the effective filter but should not change M Planck. So it's not M string which is fixed, it's M Planck. Okay. This is one thing in Swamp. The other thing is that we work in um, four dimensions. In this talk, I will uh, be thinking about four dimensions. Some of the things that uh, some of the criteria of Swamp Plant uh, don't seem to hold in two dimensions. And the uh, three dimensions um, is uh, in the middle of the way, not sure. So we uh, will work in uh, four dimensions, higher dimensions. Okay. So uh, the idea is that all quantum filters are not part of uh, the landscape, is an old idea. And uh, 
it has uh, existed for a long time. And some ideas goes back, go back to Wheeler, John Wheeler. And uh, it became a folklore uh, to say that uh, quantum gravity has no global symmetries. And also there are other uh, conjectures that are well known since long time, but um, let me uh, cite these three that are well known, uh, so that uh, there are no global symmetries, as, as I say. Then there is what we call the completeness hypothesis, that all the irreductible representation of any gauge group should be present, which means if you have, for example, a gauge group is uh, U1, all the charges uh, should be present. Uh, it is enough to have the smallest charge because then you can construct states with all the other charges. And the third conjecture is that the internal gauge group should be compact. Internal means uh, that I exclude the uh, gauge group of uh, uh, different morphism of uh, uh, space time. So this, this uh, three uh, conjectures, they have been studied since a long time. And uh, the way people try to give evidence for this, You, there are different ways, I'll go back to that. But uh, the first thing is, uh, let's take the example of a global symmetry. The first thing you have to do is to really um, define uh, exactly what you mean by a global symmetry. And uh, the uh, definition, uh, actually the, the, the one which is adopted today is uh, due to Harlow and Oguri in 2018. And it says that uh, the, you should have unitary operator which uh, make uh, a group transformation. So they map, map to the group transformation and uh, there should be some uh, states which is uh, charged in this, this group and this state should be local and uh, gauge invariant. And that uh, this unitary transformation uh, keep invariant the energy momentum tensor. So uh, if you adopt this definition, then you can uh, try to show that uh, global symmetries are not allowed in uh, theory of quantum gravity. Note that this uh, definition I gave is uh, in uh, for quantum field theory. It's not uh, when you go to try to check this, uh, the fact that global symmetry is not conserved in uh, quantum gravity, you have to uh, change this definition and because you have to go to uh, uh, space time, we include gravity and then you don't, you cannot have local operators, okay? You cannot have a local state. Nothing is local. Okay, sorry. So uh, this, um, uh, trying to prove this uh, uh, conjecture goes three ways. Uh, either uh, people uh, used to have heuristic arguments based on black hole evaporation. Uh, if you had a uh, global symmetry, you, you can have uh, uh, black holes with a global charge. And this uh, global charge conserved uh, after the black hole evaporates, you finish with a black hole that can have a huge global charge, which means it has, uh, should have a big number of degrees of freedom. And that goes against uh, the bekenstein hawking uh, entropy formula. Uh, Otherwise, there are other uh, way of checking the conjecture is to go to empirical evidence. So uh, this, uh, you look, uh, you say your quantum theory of gravity is string theory and you check in string theory if you can have a uh, global symmetries. Um, there are arguments that uh, word sheet conformal field theory, um, any global continuous symmetry there, you can uh, show that it gives in space time uh, a gauge symmetry. And uh, so you cannot have a uh, continuous global symmetry in string theory. And then uh, you check uh, case by case that every time you have a discrete uh, symmetry, it's a gauge, it's not global. 
And recently, there have been some uh, nice work by Harlow and Oguri in 2018, where they have uh, uh, shown that uh, taking the definition I gave before, that you cannot have uh, global symmetry in uh, ADS uh, using uh, the entanglement edge reconstruction you can uh, look on the boundary that uh, you should uh, have um, uh, the global symmetry should uh, act on uh, small regions the the union of these small regions and this should not be sensitive to what you have in the bulk far away so uh, which means uh, that uh, uh, holography uh, doesn't work and it's a contradiction, so you cannot have uh, a global uh, symmetry. Now, uh, important to notice is that uh, none of this is really satisfactory for us. Uh, the best one, this holography arguments, let's say the best, the most uh, robust, I would say, is uh, it doesn't apply to our world. Uh, just for uh, ADS, and you have to have a holographic uh, theory. And uh, the empirical evidence in string theory is case by case, so we don't know why things happen to be like that. We just observe that in this compactification or the other one, it seems that for some reason that sometimes we can identify things are such that there are no global symmetries. And uh, why the heuristic argument of black holes has many loopholes, and uh, also it, uh, it, it doesn't answer the case of uh, global symmetries, which are discrete. The only uh, forbids uh, continuous global symmetries. And uh, this illustrates a problem which we have in all the conjectures. Uh, the swampland conjectures is that uh, they all go along these three ways and they all are incomplete in uh, uh, some, some way or another because of this. Okay, um, among the most, uh, oops, uh, something happened, uh, yeah. Uh, among the application of this uh, absence of global symmetry, let me cite something which is, uh, I think, interesting. Is uh, cobordism conjecture by uh, Vafa and his uh, student Matanamara. And so um, the, I will not enter in the details of this uh, conjecture, but let me say uh, what is uh, why I find it interesting. Okay. Uh, it says that if you have two compact manifold, let's say uh, this uh, uh, A and B, uh, so these uh, manifolds, uh, compact or two backgrounds, can uh, that they are coordinate if they are related by a sequence of allowed uh, topological changes, which take you from one to the other. Okay. So, uh, which means uh, that uh, you imagine this is uh, your compactification space A or your compactification B space B, and you get the quantum uh, gravity theory in lower dimensions from uh, A and the one from B. So this, this is, uh, A is uh, one quantum uh, gravity theory and B the other one. And this uh, transition between the two, which uh, connects the two is uh, represented by a domain wall between these two uh, theories. So if you had that, then you can consider that this domain wall is separated different charges of, of a global symmetry. And so uh, that means you can construct uh, global symmetry uh, in uh, string theory and which goes against uh, the conjecture we just uh, gave. So uh, this is for this reason, uh, these people have uh, conjectured that all cobordism class are trivial. So they are all, uh, all are related to uh, uh, null uh, vacuum, so space. 
Now, when they try to uh, check this uh, conjecture in um, different uh, uh, string theory compactification, then they uh, sometimes they, they succeed, many times they succeed, but in some place they, they don't succeed to trivialize the cobordism class. And uh, then they postulate that there are some new uh, non supersymmetric defect, something which uh, is like a brain or an organ tip or something which is not super symmetric that we don't know about and some which I find it interesting that there might be some uh, non-perturbative objects that are there in string theory and uh, we have not seen that yet. And the, these are needed uh, to trivialize all the cobordism classes. Okay. So uh, next, let me uh, now speak about the weak gravity conjecture. So the weak gravity conjecture is uh, probably the most uh, tested, the one which has the biggest evidence among the Swamblant conjectures. And so it's uh, uh, the most popular one. And I would like to spend uh, some time uh, speaking about it, okay? So uh, please interrupt me if you have questions. So uh, what does the weak gravity conjecture say? Okay, uh, in its first version, which is uh, in 2006, by uh, Nima, uh, Lubos Motl, uh, Nicolis and Varfa. So they stated that uh, in a flat space time, for a single U1 gauge theory, if you have just one U1 gauge theory, which has a gauge coupling G, the weak gravity, this weak gravity conjecture requires that there exists a massive charge state satisfying this relation, that the, the charge is bigger than uh, the mass measured in Planck units. Okay. So uh, they have given uh, many arguments for this. So in addition to evidence from uh, string theory uh, vacua and uh, the the idea that so the uh, idea in order to uh, try to get to this relation is um, there are four here that I listed that uh, one is that uh, black holes extremal black holes can be Okay, so if uh, just by uh, climatic uh, requirement, you need to have uh, uh, states which have uh, charge bigger than the mass in order to allow decay of uh, charged black holes because charge is conserved. So this is easy to understand. Um, they also, they, they note that uh, this um, relation is that uh, leads that uh, an overall long range repulsive force, which uh, means that uh, because uh, the uh, electromagnetic force is stronger than the gravitational force. And this uh, means that you have uh, states that uh, violates the, bound, uh, the BPS bound. Uh, in this theory. Also, uh, one way to see it is that just that uh, it says that the gravity, which is on, on this right side, is weaker than uh, gauge force. And finally, uh, there you can say, okay, this um, forbids uh, the existence of gravitation uh, bound states. And uh, I didn't write it, but also it tells you that uh, G cannot be zero, which means that you cannot take continuously G to zero, which means you don't have global symmetries. You cannot uh, engineer a global symmetry starting from a gauge symmetry and take the coupling to be very small. All these uh, different requirements lead to the same uh, equation and uh, people uh, think, Okay, they use one or the other, and uh, the most popular one is the decay of black holes. And uh, this uh, is really something which is uh, specific to, I would like to say it, to flat space time, 
where the, the PPS bound or the extreme mic is really an, uh, a proportionate to a relation between the charge and the mass. Karen, sorry, just a super quick question about the formulation of the conjecture itself. Yes. I thought that all states should essentially satisfy this uh, inequality. Uh, Are you think it's just one state? No, no, the, or at least one state? Yeah, this is, uh, this is an interesting question and uh, an important question. Uh, there must be one state that uh, satisfies this. And uh, one of the I mean, one of the big uh, problems of this weak gravity uh, conjecture, one of the questions that people are trying to understand is which state? Is this uh, state, it doesn't tell you even if this state in you is in your uh, low energy effective field theory. It might be that you have, uh, you say, okay, I, have an, uh, I write an effective field theory um, and then people tell you, okay, uh, you don't have in this effective field theory uh, weak gravity conjecture state, that, uh, something that uh, satisfies this uh, equation. You say, okay, in the effective filter, I don't have to have it. It might be uh, above the UV cutoff of your effective filter. You cannot uh, do that in um, uh, theory with gravity because if you push the mass to be uh, bigger and bigger, then you will form a black hole and the black hole is part of the states of your theory. But on the level of the effective field theory, you can do it. So is that really possible? That's a question that is still open. Which state uh, verify this conjecture? Is it in a light state uh, or which constraint on about this state? Thank you for the question. Okay. Yes. Yeah. One more question. Can you comment on the compatibility? On the Excuse me? In, uh, can you comment between this condition? Yes. Uh, can I comment uh, the, the different, oh, yeah. in this, uh, different conditions? It, it seems that this, this statement contradicts the BPS bound in theory. Uh, yeah, this this state is uh, non BPS. It's uh, super extremal. Yes. I, I, you want me to uh, because I, your connection is not uh, good or my connection is not good. I don't hear well. It's. Uh, I think Boris is asking you to comment about the BPS bound in string theory when you have a supersymmetric theory on the contradiction apparent contradiction uh, with the BPS bound. I think. Uh, you have uh, BPS states that will satisfy the equality, but even in string theory, you have uh, states which uh, are uh, super extremal and non BPS. Um, they exist in uh, heterotic strings. So they, they satisfy this inequality. Yeah, uh, actually, that brings one question of mine, if I may ask you, Karim, is that I, I'm always confused with this because in string theory, typically we have dilatants. And so there is a, a strong difference between the, the, the quantized charge, which can be over extremal, uh, and the uh, central charge, or the, which, uh, which measures the force of the electromagnetic field on the, the particle. So, so the two things are, are, are not the same, uh, and I'm never sure of what the conjecture is saying in this case. Of, uh, okay, I, I will, uh, in two slides, or four slides, I will go to the dilaton in case. Uh, okay. you, you can wait, it's fine. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, so, anyway, so this, um, the first thing you do is that uh, now is you say, okay, this says a single U1. Usually in my theories, I have many U1s. So what happens with the uh, different U1s? And uh, when you have different U1s, so the condition is uh, written here in blue. And it tells you that you have a con convex hull. You have to have a convex hull uh, so that uh, this equality is this uh, sphere in the middle and you're, you should have your states present outside. Uh, and um, using dimensional reduction, these people were able to show uh, uh, quickly that, um, I mean, if you want to have this uh, condition uh, verified, uh, then you need an infinite number of charges. 
So uh, you cannot just have uh, one charge, you, you, one charge state, which uh, verifies the weak gravity conjecture. You will need to have an infinity number of them. And one question which people are working on uh, today is, uh, are these, uh, how are these uh, charges, these infinite uh, states organized? In a lattice, in a tower, uh, uh, sub-lattice of a lattice? Um, so this is um, a question which has not uh, received an answer yet. Karim? Yes. Uh, so what happens when you have, say, a ground unified theory where, I mean, it's not obvious that the scale of uh, uh, symmetry breaking is, uh, is uh, higher than the mass of the state that you have to consider. I mean, the question is up to which scale you have you want and whether the mass of the particle that appears in the conjecture is really below this uh, the scale. And the the theory just tells you that um, the mass should be below and plonk uh, but uh, because uh, but you, you, there is no reason um, i don't uh, you mean the the mass of the uh, weak gravity conjecture state you don't have a constraint on uh, i mean for the conjecture you need u ones but the question is at which uh, below which scale do you have u ones in your theory below which scale i have u ones um Ground you need. Um, now the, the the theory doesn't tell you. You just uh, need to say it's a U one. And let me uh, go to maybe this uh, next maybe next slide or so. I I will make a comment and uh, if the U one comes from breaking of uh, non abelian gauge group. So uh, I yeah, think that's my question. If your U1 is, is not a U1 till the Planck scale, or to, to, it's not a fundamental U1, but it's embedded in a. Yeah, this, that's precisely my question. Yeah, then uh, it just, uh, then in that case, it tells you that there is a cutoff and uh, for your theory. That's. Uh, okay. That's, uh, um, before going to that, uh, let me, uh, because I was uh, speaking about all these um, charge carriers. Uh, let me say that um, there is um, another conjecture that was made that was that uh, if uh, about charge carriers that if a charge can be carried by a BPS state, then the BPS states with this charge should be part of the physical spectrum. So if you have um, some P form gauge, uh, gauge uh, theory, then uh, uh, there is um, some state that can be charged and can be PPS, then uh, it should be in, in the spectrum. This with uh, using anomaly inflow allowed um, these people, Kim Shu and Wafa, to exclude some of uh, the gauge groups that you are a priori anomaly free. Uh, you can say there should could be some string theories with these gauge groups. Also another, um, uh, weak gravity conjecture, which is called Sharpen weak gravity conjecture, is that this relation that I showed you, that uh, uh, this one in blue, it, the quality uh, can happen only if uh, you have supersymmetry and it's only satisfied by BPS states. And uh, you can intuitively understand that uh, if uh, you have uh, non supersymmetric theory, I have quantum correction that will come and correct um, the two sides and uh, will take you to uh, a region where it's not saturated, but you have super extremal states for the weak gravity conjecture. Okay, so uh, magnetic uh, weak gravity conjecture. In the magnetic weak gravity conjecture, what you say is that you apply the same uh, constraint on uh, monopoles. And uh, magnetic monopole uh, mass, you say uh, over M Planck should be uh, smaller than the coupling of the interaction with magnetic monopoles. You write the magnetic monopole uh, with the charge one, magnetic charge one, as lambda uv over uh, g square. And this tells you, uh, from this you can extract that uh, lambda uv 
So the cutoff of this theory should be smaller than G or, or times M plus. And for many U1s, this uh, mean you, you should take the smallest of the G. And uh, going back to Dan's question, um, in fact, when U1 uh, comes from uh, uh, non-abelian theory, then what you find is that uh, this lambda UV will be uh, smaller. Here you can see it's the web of the of the Higgs, which breaks the non-abelian symmetry. Let me uh, mention that uh, uh, the question if uh, you had uh, your U1 is Higgs. You say uh, we made the conjecture and about the U1 gauge theory and say that it has to have some charges, etc. Uh, what happens if the U1 is Higgs? And uh, the answer is not known. Uh, we suspect there are arguments that uh, if there should be some uh, restrictions on the size of the Higgsing from quantum gravity. But we don't uh, have uh, an explicit uh, conjecture some way uh, to test it. Okay. Uh, now, let me speak about some application. Uh, I just want to mention two things. Uh, the, the, uh, this uh, theory of uh, weak gravity conjecture, the swampland was supposed to help uh, phenomenology and say, okay, when you do some effective filtering, you say, I will use it to describe our world. It might not be uh, correct because it doesn't satisfy some uh, condition of the swampland. Uh, and the weak gravity conjecture gives some consent on U1 and people doing phenology like to use them um, often U1s. But if you look at uh, the, the constraint from uh, the weak gravity conjecture, you see that uh, in fact uh, it constrains uh, G uh, to be uh, bigger than some number which is ridiculously small. So for uh, electromagnetism is, I mean, it, it, the G is 0 0.3 and the weak gravity conjecture tells you it has to be bigger than 10 to the minus 21. And if you plug in the relation, the mass of the order of TV, it tells you that uh, uh, there should be, uh, the coupling can not be smaller than 10 to the minus 15, which is, uh, you never do in uh, phenomenology. However, there was this funny remark, just want to mention it here, that uh, if you take this relation, uh, lambda uv smaller than g times m Planck, then you will see that uh, the g uh, that people use for dark photon to explain, I suppose that you all have, have heard uh, about it, the uh, xenon anomaly, that they have seen some signal that might be there is some new particles, some dark matter states or whatever that leaves something in their uh, detector. It can be just uh, tr tritium that uh, pollutes their experiment, but uh, there might be something else, we don't know. Then if you take uh, what people need as G and you say that uh, for dark photon G has to be of the order 10 to minus 14, it goes 10 to minus 15, 10 minus 13, depends on uh, mixing or with um, electromagnetism, then you see that this gives you that your cutoff should be uh, of the order of uh, 10 tens of TV, which means that uh, you should have new physics uh, at most uh, at uh, 10 TV. So it can be lighter or around 10 TV or 100 TV which you can detect in future colliders. Okay. So I found it uh, amusing remark. Okay. Um, so one way to get the uh, weak gravity conjecture I was telling you was to consider the decay of black holes. And in non supersymmetric theory, uh, people have uh, looked at uh, the, this relation between for extremal uh, uh, black holes and they found that there, this relation that at uh, leading order is telling you for extremely black hole and mass equal to charge. When you include the uh, higher derivative correction to your Lagrangian, we'll take it to mass more than uh, charge. So, and this is called the black hole uh, with gravity conjecture. And then people, uh, some people say, okay, they have proved the uh, with gravity conjecture because they, they have the states and uh, mass uh, goes, uh, 
in the right direction. Uh, and so people uh, like to think about black holes as um, they, you often hear this um, uh, popular, uh, uh, popular words that black holes are the atoms of quantum gravity and we are gonna discover properties of quantum gravity from black holes. So black holes have led the uh, research on this uh, weak gravity conjecture and uh, it's um, all uh, different aspects to try to see uh, how we can write it in different situations. So when, one place where you can do it is to go to ADS. Uh, ADS is very popular for very good reasons, so people have looked at uh, ADS. And this uh, requirement of decay of black holes for ADS uh, is uh, not really uh, conclusive. Um, so first, uh, if you say a black hole has to decay in uh, ADS, so it will produce some uh, decay into other massive particles, the, this uh, this really doesn't sound right because all this massive particle will, will fall back. There is a potential which goes like R square over uh, the ADS radius square, R being the distance from uh, your location, and uh, which will at, uh, is attractive and so will give back all the states that have uh, left the black holes to, into the black hole. So this uh, doesn't lead some. So people have tried to different decay channels to try to get some uh, weak gravity conjecture in the case of uh, ADS space, where I told you there is uh, uh, this conjecture that I uh, wrote was in the case of flat space time. And there are many proposals that I don't want to enter into the details, but uh, I mean, that you decay to a scalar condensate, that you look on uh, the ADS CFT size to, to, side, sorry, to, to see what the kind of uh, equivalent uh, requirement you might write on the dimension of your operators. You, that you might decay be through scalar hair because there is no no hair theorem in ADS, or you can write uh, the uh, the theory being uh, should have states which are super extremal, or there is um, that uh, some states which some scalar should be there so that it avoids the naked singularity and uh, the cosmic censorship. All these have led to all kinds of uh, bounds, and you see the different bounds, they, are, they really don't look the same. And also you see that uh, ex extremality and BPS requirements, super, um, so violation of BPS bound and uh, being super extremal don't lead the same result. And so it, it's not a, a settled question, it's a confused uh, situation. So. What is uh, the weak gravity conjecture in ADS? And you can go to the sitter. And the sitter, you can uh, you have uh, uh, black holes which have uh, three horizons: R minus, uh, Cauchy surface, event uh, horizon, and cosmological horizon. And the extremality is that this uh, event uh, horizon is uh, uh, coincident with uh, the Cauchy surface. So you can ask that you are super extreme and you get a, a relation which, when lambda goes to zero, recovers the uh, space-time uh, with gravity conjecture. So this is from super extreme light. Well, on the other hand, you try to say that uh, the weak gravity conjecture is uh, uh, a consequence of requiring that black holes uh, should not decay, then in the sitter black holes always decay. So you have no uh, weak gravity conjecture, you have no nothing. These people have uh, tried to propose something, uh, So, but this you see when you take lambda to zero, it, it gives nothing. So um, also this here, the situation is confused. So, and this uh, shows you that uh, the, we don't really understand 
what is the principle behind the weak gravity conjecture? Which re, what, what goes wrong, really, if we uh, uh, don't have weak gravity conjecture uh, hold? Okay. Let me go to Scholar, and um, uh, I had uh, a question from Guillaume. So, uh, Scholar, with the, you have a gelatin, okay. So, uh, people have considered that. Um, let me say something. You see here now we are go to from 2006 to 2015. And what happens is that as I told you that uh, at some point that uh, the constraint from for phenomenology from the weak gravity conjecture is really uh, nothing. There is uh, no constraint. And every absence of global symmetry doesn't tell you when global symmetry is broken, how much you might say, okay, I, I do phenomenology with uh, global symmetry and uh, I say, okay, it's broken in uh, Planck scale. So I don't care about this very small breaking. Uh, things changed for weak gravity conjecture when people apply it for the zero form, which is the axion. So they have what is they call the axionic weak gravity conjecture. And uh, because of bicep, and uh, that says, okay, that there might be some tensor mode that you will see, etc. People were very excited trying to build uh, some cosmological model with uh, axions. And, uh, in, and uh, there is an equivalent uh, inequality that you can write for axion. I don't have time to, to cover this subject. But that gave, gave uh, a lot of interest in weak uh, gravity conjecture, and people have uh, then worked on that. And in 2015, so these guys considered the case of um, dilat dilatonic uh, coupling to uh, the E1, which, uh, as uh, Guillaume said, you have in string theory. And so from uh, looking at uh, black P brains, you can say, OK, uh, I need super extremal. And then you get this relation. So it, there is a, a different factor. Like, let's say if you have um, uh, alpha is uh, square root of three, for example, then this will give you four over two, which gives you two, while for alpha equal uh, zero, which we had before, it gives you one half. So the relation is uh, a bit different. Um, and uh, on the other hand, you can take uh, uh, just an uh, a scalar and say there is a scalar and that uh, masses will depend on the scalar and then you get uh, uh, and you say okay I would like to have the force to be repulsive and then you get uh, some uh, this uh, equation of if you want you can say uh, I take a BPS states they don't feel a force and I impose that I uh, violate the B BPS bound and uh, here there is the gravitational interaction, and here is the scalar interaction, which is also attractive. So I put it on this side, and uh, it, it comes from derivative with respect of scalar, which the mass depend on, and it gives you this extra term. So it, it happens that uh, uh, for simple uh, states in uh, string theory, these two relations are equivalent, but they are not always e equivalent. This uh, comes from uh, extremality and this comes from BPS bound. And you know, uh, going to conifold that some uh, states become massless and uh, uh, they are super extremal and uh, the two relations are not uh, the same. So, uh, did I answer Guillaume's question? Uh, not completely, sorry, in the sense that uh, sorry, for me, uh, for example, the central charge would depend explicitly on the dilatonic coupling of the field strengths by the definition to define what would be. Uh, so it's not clear to me if it is a quantized charge which is bounded into conjecture or if it is the central charge which defines the, the electromagnetic force field by the, 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 the particle. It, it's, it's the central charge. Here, here, it's the central charge. Here, the G squared, Q squared would be the central charge. But if this, this is a central charge, then I have a problem with supersymmetric theory in the sense that the, the BPS bound does hold for the central charge, meaning that there is no particle 
with mass. Yeah, okay. Um, less than the central charge, even in HLT. Yeah, the, the, the P PPS uh, states, this is the, here it's Z, Z square, you can write it as function of Z square, mass and Z square, no? And N equal two, you write it Z, Z square. Uh, but what I mean is that if you have N equal two supersymmetry, all mass of all particles are greater or equal than the absolute value of Z. No, 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 it's not uh, all. You, this tells you that just that you, you need to have one state. Yeah, what I'm saying is that no state will be below, strictly below. They can be saturated, but not strictly below. Uh, then it's not a problem. Okay, because you just mean BPS states. That's what you say. Okay, sorry. Yeah, Thank you. Yeah. yeah, so it's not a problem. I mean, in fact, there are papers by people in Harvard uh, that wrote exactly that. Okay, let me... Um, uh, some postdocs. Let me uh, go on then. So, um, okay, I have to speed. Uh, I had the gauge uh, symmetry and added uh, scalars. Now I can say, okay, let me get rid of the gauge uh, force and just look at the scalar. Can I uh, get uh, something uh, similar than the weak gravity conjecture just for the scalars? And this was uh, first uh, discussed um, by Palti in 2017. But then really uh, writing as a scalar with gravity conjecture was done by uh, Luis Ibanez and Gonzalo and they proposed something which is um, what will be the with gravity conjecture. Um, with the, it has, in the gauge theory, the, the four point function is related to the three point function um, by gauge symmetry. But in, uh, for scalars, there is not something like that. So uh, there is, um, they propose this, and this includes the four point function. Uh, this is uh, by, by, by bounding the forces between the states. And um, when I told you that uh, in the gauge, you uh, want gauge um, symmetry uh, with gravity conjecture that uh, you had the uh, gauge uh, interaction are stronger than the gravitational interaction. I, uh, this makes sense only if, if I specify the scale. And the scale is the scale of the mass of your uh, external states, which are the weak gravity conjecture states. So, so, if, you, so if you are at the scale of the mass of your external states, the, of the states that are um, scattering, then you are not relativistic. And then uh, this uh, point-like interaction is important and um, four-point function. It's not long distance. Uh, there is a problem with this conjecture. You can see it very quickly. I mean, you take M Planck to infinity and it tells you this, um, this should be uh, positive and there is no reason that this should always be positive. Uh, we propose that uh, there is uh, some, whatever, uh, for any scalar there should exist at least one uh, other state such that your interaction is uh, stronger than the gravitational one. The gravitational one should never be the strongest interaction for uh, any state in your theory. This was uh, our proposal with my two students. And uh, then uh, Luis Ibanez proposed recently that uh, it's, uh, the weak gravity conjecture is uh, some kind of uh, bound on uh, pair production and where gravitational processes should be subdominant compared to the other processes. And this uh, gives you some, the, the last two conjectures give you similar bounds and uh, they bound the, the different, uh, for examples, uh, they bound the different parameters on, Okay, let me, I don't have time, so let me skip this. Let me tell you something uh, which uh, for me was uh, a little bit uh, uh, difficult to understand it is, uh, I, I told you about ADS and the sitter uh, uh, conjectures, and then I told you about the dilatonic uh, gravity conjecture. So I can put the, the two together and try to just uh, as a criterion, try to uh, keep a super extremality, okay? Which I know gives in the limit of uh, uh, cosmological constant uh, to zero, uh, I should reproduce the flat space time with gravity conjecture that I know, contrary to the other uh, the other criteria where either I don't know how to apply them, uh, how can you define the forces 
uh, in the de-sitter and uh, or uh, they, they lead to something which uh, I mean all kind of things which I cannot relate to the original graph conflict. So uh, when trying to do that there is a solution that uh, there is one way a potential that you can write a dilatonic black hole in uh, ADS at the sitter. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very difficult to get the solution. These people got a solution and uh, something happened with this solution is that uh, you never for the sitter uh, first let me say for alpha bigger than uh, uh, one over square root of three uh, the the bound is the same than in flat space time it, the theory is not sensitive extremality is not sensitive to the presence of um, cosmological constant this change in for uh, one over square root of three and uh, uh, and for one of uh, for alpha small than one over square root of three, you never reach extremity. The, your metric becomes complex before you reach that at some place where uh, you have this relation. Why? I don't know. Okay. We have tried to understand uh, some. We have some uh, interaction which become. Uh, uh, repulsive than attractive and uh, all kind of things we discussed in the paper but uh, uh, it's not conclusive okay. this was uh, okay okay uh, I finished with the weak gravity conjecture I think I um, covered uh, nearly everything we know about the weak gravity conjecture uh, uh, but then I want to just mention quickly uh, something else and the swampland distance conjecture. Uh, the swampland distance conjecture, what it tells you that um, uh, string theory has no parameters, all the couplings and the masses or everything comes from the vacuum uh, expectation value of scalar fields. And uh, you might uh, take this uh, vacuum expectation value to uh, infinite distance uh, take it uh, sometimes to zero, sometimes to infinity. And uh, the conjecture tells you that uh, when you try to do that, an infinite tower of states becomes light at infinite field distance limit. So, and they become light in uh, an exponential way. So uh, the fact that it's an infinite number that of states that become light will um, break uh, your effective field theory description. So it's no more valid. You have an infinite new states that are uh, coming in your theory. So you cannot just modify it a little bit. You have to write another effective field. So um, this gives you a, a bound on uh, the size of the excursion of your uh, scalar field. And uh, uh, this bound uh, is important for cosmology. And uh, this link makes that this lambda is important for cosmologists, how much it is. And there is a lot of activity of people trying to find uh, what is this value of lambda uh, and uh, to check this in different way. And what are the states that are becoming all light? What is this tower of states? Of course, there is a very, uh, very simple case, I mean, uh, don't need uh, two minutes to think about it. And this is the Kaluza Klein states where you, the, you are taking the compactification scale to, to infinity, or in the dual case for winding modes, you're taking it to zero. And then you have all these Kaluza Klein states that come light. But there is uh, uh, also uh, maybe uh, also quite trivial that you take the string coupling to infinity and you know this is the, the deep brains, uh, you know, the, the monopoles that are becoming uh, light and you have to have a, another description, this is trivial. But when, if you take GS to zero, then this is uh, what happens is that I told you in the beginning, the first slide, I told you that you have to keep M Planck fixed. When you keep M Planck fixed is the string oscillators that become light. And uh, so you have to go to another uh, description. So this is less trivial. And uh, okay, uh, so uh, there is also people looked at um, if you uh, shrink some cycles that uh, without uh, changing the size of the compactification scales, and then you can go to 
to see which kind of state uh, appear. And so there is a lot of activity trying to understand which states become light. And if you, uh, if you are going to go to some theory that you didn't know before, and for the time being, uh, we always go to uh, string vacuum that we knew before. Karim? Yes. You have, you have like five minutes left. Is that okay? Yeah, uh, this is my last slide and conclusion. Perfect. Thanks. And just uh, you see uh, what I tried to cover. I, I thought um, I didn't have time to cover uh, all the conjectures. I would have uh, been, been uh, really. Um, very graphic and uh, it would have been a useless talk if I had to cover all the conjectures. And let me just mention a few that are popular, like uh, the ADS conjecture, that when you take the cosmological constant to zero, then uh, you have uh, uh, many states that are becoming, an infinite number of states that are becoming uh, massless, so you, you cannot uh, uh, decouple the kaluzak line state, for example. Uh, there is uh, the story of um, ADS instability, which uh, is uh, the fact that uh, it's a consequence of uh, the sharpened weak gravity conjecture. So uh, the weak gravity conjecture, uh, uh, I remind you was telling you that uh, there should be a state which uh, verifies some inequality, gauge bigger than gravity, stronger. And gravity and uh, the uh, sharp and weak gravity conjecture I remind you is uh, I mentioned it is that there is an equality of uh, the gauge interaction and the gravitational interactions um, strength only for BPS in uh, supersymmetric theory so if you take an ADS which is not supersymmetric theory uh, there should be this state that uh, weak gravity conjectures tell you is there and it cannot saturate the, the bound because you don't have supersymmetry. And then you can say this state that is there uh, is, um, will, uh, will form a bubble and expand and destroy your ADS in uh, Hubble time. So very quickly. Uh, and uh, it will go to another uh, ADS state. And if this ADS state is uh, not, uh, uh, supersymmetric, it will have the same thing till you reach a uh, supersymmetric state or uh, flat space time. There is the De Sitter conjecture, which um, tells you some uh, inequality that uh, potential for scalars should satisfy. I spoke about the scalar uh, with gravity conjecture that uh, I worked on and with Ibanez work on and some people. And there you have absolute value for the everything. Uh, the same relation, but with absolute value. Here you don't have absolute value. Okay. There is a Transplankian censorship conjecture, which is a mild uh, version of the Decitor conjecture, if you want. Uh, which allows uh, the existence of Decitor space, but they should be very shortly lived. And this comes from the fact that you should not be, uh, uh, you should not be able to see subplankian physics, that uh, the Decitor expansion should not uh, expand that so much that uh, something which was subplankian will become a classical and you can see it. Subplankian in, uh, Land. Uh, and uh, there is the gravitational distance conjecture based on uh, the um, three level breaking of supersymmetry in string theory that um, Alvaro is going to give a talk about. So, and there are other conjectures that I didn't list. I mean. So, let me conclude because I, I have reached the end of my talk and my time. The, let me uh, say something. First, the global, global symmetries, um, we don't know how much they should be broken. This is uh, an important question. Is, is it, uh, if we don't have answer to this, we can say nothing about applicability in uh, phenomenology or real life, okay? Real world. Uh, we have this weak gravity conjecture. I showed you that when you leave this flat space time simple uh, case, then you find yourself that you really uh, see that you don't understand what is behind the weak gravity conjecture. 
we even in the flat space time we don't know what state is uh, saturating or what state is uh, very fine the weak optical conjecture is it in the effective filter no what is it so uh when uh, people do all this um, swamp lump distance conjecture and they go into a follow the field uh, vacuum expectation to go to infinite distance this assumes that you can go continuously uh, from uh, place uh, from a value to the other one and this might be just property of some uh, supersymmetric theory or theories that can come from supersymmetry and in non-supersymmetric theory for example why that I mean, uh, all, among all these uh, things we see in string theory, which ones are really linked to supersymmetry? We uh, don't know. Uh, I mean, uh, that's a question. Also, most of the evidence we have either come from this uh, black hole uh, heuristic arguments that have a lot of uh, loopholes, or from string theory evidence and uh, how much are the string theory evidence generic uh, for any theory of quantum gravity? Or is uh, any theory of quantum gravity gonna be uh, uh, some way related uh, to a string theory? And uh, if not, are, no, are we just not learning about some string theory vacuum that we know? And uh, as I said, the application to, to phenomenology, uh, I uh, showed you some funny thing uh, that I have done with my uh, students. Just, it's really uh, just a small um, observation we made. But it's very little that you can extract for the time being from the swamp land program, which aimed at giving you some kind of rules to tell phenomenologists, okay, in effective filter, you can do this, you can do that, and not the other thing. So, uh, uh, some progress has to be made before we really apply things, to the, the swamp plan program to finish. Okay, I uh, thank you everyone and uh, I have finished. Okay, thank you very much uh, Karim for the very nice uh, talk. Um, let's thank Karim, maybe unmute yourself or clap virtually, whatever you fancy. Uh, we are slightly over time, so maybe there's Time for one urgent question, if there's uh, some. Can I ask one, uh, uh, Henning? Sure. Yeah, please. Uh, that's, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> About phenomenology, Karim. So if there was a dark photon coupling to B minus L. Yes. Uh, and it was massless. This uh, could rule out string theory. Is this a correct statement? If we discovered such a photon, you would say string theory is ruled out? And if so, do you know the bounds on this? No. Um, no. Uh, the, if it was first, if it, so if it was massless, you think how much the gauge coupling for to, of b minus l should be small this is the question then uh, uh, right which presumably you can have some cosmological measures for no yes but i don't uh, i don't remember that uh, there is um, a bound which is uh, is it more than 10 to the minus uh, I mean, uh, the, even if you, you, you want to say that it will be excluded from the weak gravity conjecture, yes? But, well, string the as you said, string theory, I think, predicts. So if we are more modest, you can just say string theory, but there, but if string. Theory. Yeah, but uh, but what you want to use as the bound is the, the weak gravity conjecture bound. That yes. The yes. gauge coupling is uh, very small. The gauge coupling is very small, but then you have to show that there are not, no uh, state with a mass which is uh, very small. This is... Uh, you have to also show that there are no B minus L states that are very, uh, very light. 
so right. that uh, the bound will be satisfied by this uh, light state. It just tells you that you need to have an extra state. Then, um, on the other hand, you can, um, uh, if you use the weak uh, gravity conjecture in the magnetic version, then it tells you that um, you will have to have a cutoff of that theory, so you will have to have some new physics uh, very low, which is uh, related uh, to B minus L, but it doesn't tell you how coupled uh, this is. So ruled out, I wouldn't say. Uh, but uh, engineering such a phenomenological model, I think, would be uh, difficult. I see. You know already that okay. The oh, okay. are very light. Oh. Okay. I suggest we take over the discussion to to gather town, uh, so we can meet there and and, and go on. Uh, Boris has put the link to the chat. You see the usual link of gather town. Uh, uh, please log off from uh, Zoom when you connect there, because if not, there will be problems with the inf uh, sound interference. And um, we meet again at 11, uh, and let's uh, thank uh, Karim again, uh, and see you in a moment. Thank you.